Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hope you're having a good week. It was U.S. Open time. Tea times, I think, just went off. I'm recording at like 7 o'clock in the morning. I think uh, the first tea times were like 6.45. So, good day. U.S. Open. I always love the U.S. Open. Um, but hey, before we get into everything, just want to let you know, hey, Team Titleist, just more than a name. It's a community of golfers just like us. Titleist has created this community to connect us to product experts, host events, and provide opportunities like prototype testing. Uh, you know, the white box white boxes that you see that your friends may have, you may see on social media. The plain white box has some Titleist balls in them. Yeah, it's like future Pro V1, future ball testing. And if you want to do something like that, you got to join Team Titleist. And uh, you're, you'll be part of the R&D process, which is pretty cool. And then Team Titleist offers great special gear drops featuring the TT logo that are only available to members. So check out Titleist.com. Check out Team Titleist, join up, become a member, and get access to a lot of cool perks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the prototype testing thing is pretty cool. Um, just one of those things where I think everybody saw it online and wanted to be a piece. But uh, check that out. And uh, yeah, back to the show. It's, uh, you know, like I said, U.S. Open week, uh, week. I always love the U.S. Open. It's one of my favorite majors. I mean, the Masters is my favorite. This is, man, it, it's hard to say if this is two or the Open Championship is two. Um there's just something about the history of the Open Championship that's pretty wild, but for whatever reason, the, the U.S. Open, I love the fact that it's just an absolutely brutal course. Uh, and a lot of these pros <laughs> go out there and shooting something like, you know, one over par that can, you know, or, or a couple under that can win it, uh, but it's low scoring. Uh, you're watching guys just have a hard time hacking it out of the rough. All that kind of stuff. I, I enjoy seeing that once or twice a year. I don't need to see it every week. I don't need to see, you know, guys getting just absolutely hammered, whatever. But I also don't need to see 27, 30 under every week as well. You know, I, I want to see a little bit of, uh, I want to see a little bit of challenge for some of these players and make them look a little more human. And uh, like I said, to me, I, I love the U.S. Open, just the fact that it's it, it's insanely hard. You put any one of us out there, and regardless if you're a scratch golfer, you're a 20 handicap, whatever, we'd all just get absolutely annihilated. I mean, the scores we would shoot would be so high, it'd be so crazy. Uh, but, that, but like I said, to, to me, that's the fun of it. Um, I, it'll be exciting to watch. I'll be watching a good amount of it. As much as I can, I got a wedding this weekend. So tomorrow I'll be basically at a wedding all day. I'm going to try to watch as much as I can. Uh, I'm definitely going to watch Saturday and Sunday when I can. But uh, today and tomorrow may be a little more difficult. Uh, I'm recording early because uh, my wife, it's my sister in law's wedding. So it will be, my wife's going up to, to help set up today. So I'll be kind of working slash dad duty. And then. Friday's uh, his wedding, so it'll be uh, it's a busy weekend here at, at my house. Uh, but and, and unfortunately, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to squeeze in any golf. I may try to sneak something in on Sunday if I can. I just don't know if it's gonna happen. Uh, and one, I didn't set a tee time, so I probably am not golfing anywhere. But it, you know, hey, it happens. Uh, you know, that's what happens when you get older. Life gets you. Uh, people, you know, we were always uh, talking to the, you know young people who are golfers, whatever. It's like. Get it in now, because you know as soon as you have kids, all that it, it takes a little toll on uh, on your game. So, um, but it was been uh, been a good week so far. Uh, been a good week. Been busy. Last night had uh, my I, I go on a, a guys group uh, a, a trip with a group of guys up to the northern part of Michigan every year. We got a group of sixteen guys, and we had our draft last night. So we play a little Ryder Cup style. You know, eight eight guys against eight guys, and uh, it. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those where it's a good group of guys because nobody's taking it absolutely insane serious. We're like, you know, <laughs> the guy on the other team and the other cart won't talk to you or something like that. Like, it's, you know, you have some fun. You maybe have a few beverages. Uh, but you're also trying to win a couple points and, and you know, get your name on that uh, that trophy that we have. Um, but it's a really gr good group of guys. This year, usually we do a draft. We do a draft every year. This year was kind of getting tough because... Again, as everybody gets older, people have kids, people have kids playing sports, people are doing stuff. Uh, our commissioner is a, a coach. Uh, he coaches baseball, and his team has been doing really well the past few years, and they're you know, going deeper into you know, playoffs and things like that. So uh, just everything about it is just a little more difficult. So our, our draft kind of popped up last night in a sense. We, I think we planned it like early in the week or late last week and uh, basically said uh, Wednesday night is it. If you can show up in person, great. If you can't, here's like a Zoom link, and you can you know zoom in and, and watch and participate through there. Uh, was an absolute. It was a good time. We have uh, 
This year, we unfortunately lost uh, one guy for hopefully just this year. We'll see him and his wife having a having their baby, and when they went and checked in with their doctor. They basically said, you know, they're probably going to be happening around the time of the event. So he unfortunately had to drop out, which is a little bit of a bummer. But uh, we got a a guy to replace him uh, for this year. And uh, it's just fun. We don't we don't mess with handicaps. Uh, a lot of people ask, like, how do you do the scoring, all that. We don't really do with ha- with handicaps. We basically do matchups. Uh, and we did this last night. So last night we did the draft. Um, you know, we, we two ca- there's two captains every year, uh, and then you know we go through pick players. And basically for the most part, that ends up pretty equal. You know, everybody, you know, everybody kind of knows who's who and you know how guys play. And um, I mean, yes, there's always fluctuations fluctuations that weekend where. One guy plays really well, another guy doesn't play well. It just, you know, it just depends. But for the most part, everybody has an idea of, of how everybody plays. And then um, we had also do when we do our matchups, uh, we kind of go through and pick the matchups that we, you know, pretty sure are pretty equal. You know, we're not going to go put like, you know, the best player against the worst player in, in terms of, you know, a match play thing on Sunday or anything like that. But uh, we went through and, and just did it all. We don't want to really mess with handicaps, just a kind of a pain to dot scorecards and, and all that jazz so everything's kind of just done as close as we can get it you play straight up and uh and that's it so we uh, went through all that uh we did the like i said draft then we did the matchups uh and the matchups change i mean the, the first day matchups don't change so we play we play friday saturday sunday we play 36 36 18 some guys go up thursday night or thursday afternoon play another like 18 <laughs> that uh, thursday and then uh like i said we play 36 36 18 and then we go home, and you're beat. Um, but uh, the first day, the, the matchups pretty much stay the same. And then second day, uh, you know, th- a few things may change depending on how people are playing and things like that. And then Sunday is is basically Saturday night. Uh, you know, the Sunday matches are basically revisited on who's playing well, who's not, who should be matched up with who, and <clears throat> and all that. We try to make it as fair as possible. So it's an absolute blast. It's a lot of fun. Like I said last night. Uh, you know, just had a, a good time at, uh, at one of the guys' house. I should end up being my brother's house. Uh, just hanging out on the back 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 porch and uh, and going through. And uh, it was uh, it was a good time. It was hot. Uh, we were you know stuck outside. It was like ninety degrees. Some sweaty boys out there, but uh, but it was a good time. So excited for that. That's the beginning of August. Uh, I'll be doing that, and uh, it's just going to be uh, it, it's just a good time. We, we like I said, this is my this is my fourth year doing it. Um, They've been playing a little longer than that, uh, but this is my fourth year in it, and uh, like I said, it's been a good, uh, a great time, you know, every year. Just because I think you know, it's, it's, uh, it's serious enough where you know you don't want to have too many beverages where you can't finish the round or play, but you also don't, like I said, don't want to take it so serious where you're, you know, not talking to guys and you know, not you know, making put out two inch putts and stuff like that. So it's, it's a good mix of, uh, of competitive yet, um, you know, yet, uh, uh, yet fun at the same time, but, uh, excited for that. I'm always excited. I don't want it to come cause I don't want August to be here yet. Uh, but I'm also excited that I want it to be here because it's just a fun event. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm you're, you're torn a little bit on, on it, but it was fun to go and, and see everybody. And a lot of the guys, uh, you know, I haven't seen since last year. So, uh, it was fun to just kind of see everybody catch up and, and you know, see that everybody's doing well. So anyway, I got another show today. Like I said, I'm not going to go crazy, crazy long, I don't think. I always say that, and then I end up going the same amount of length, same length that I always go. But uh, I got two items to talk about today, uh, and I just, like I said, I've got uh, kind of a busy day ahead of me. So I'll be, uh, like I said, playing, playing, playing a single dad today, which uh, which is fine. It's all, all good. I've... I, I don't typically play single dad when I'm and work at the same time, but uh, we'll see how it does. My wife does it every day, so I mean she's an absolute saint. I don't know how she does it, and that's you know, but she does. She somehow watches our daughter and works at the same time and, and gets everything done. We'll see how I do. We'll see how I do. I don't. I, I definitely don't have her skills, but uh, we'll see uh, see how it goes. But we'll get into today. Like I said, two things to talk about. The first one I'm going into is uh, something that brand new came out, and it is, you know, I guess, pretty new. Uh, it's been out for just a little bit. Uh, but the new ShotScope Pro LX Plus. Uh, now the Pro L- Pro it, it, the Pro LX Plus is kind of a combination. Uh, so the Pro LX is actually the Pro LX is just the rangefinder uh, from ShotScope. And if you're not familiar with ShotScope, ShotScope. 
Shot Scope's been around for a while. Uh, they they started out making uh, you know, shot tracking software, uh, watches with GPS, all that. Uh, so the first units were shot tracking, watch, you know, a watch that had did GPS shot tracking, uh, and it had all that built into it. And it was uh, it was a pretty cool thing. And I think at the time, uh, all the shot tracking stuff, shot shot tracking uh, stuff was done pretty much Arcos and was it Game Golf. So you either had your phone or you had like a belt thing uh, for for Game Golf, which I think is gone now. I I don't know if they're even in business anymore. But anyway. <clears throat> You had uh, some type of, you know, extra unit, and uh, ShotScope was, I think, one of the first to put a GPS watch, which you could, you know, check your yardages out on the course, uh, and integrate that into the shot tracking. And uh, it was a pretty popular thing. They've done a, a couple versions of it. I think uh, the latest one was, was V3, which I think I talked about a while ago. I don't think I did uh, anything real recent uh, on it, but I think I talked about the, the V3 uh, a while ago, which was really good. It was actually a pretty comfortable watch. I don't typically like wearing watches when I play, uh, but it was actually pretty comfortable. It stayed in, in, in place really well, and uh, the shot tracking stuff is uh, is pretty cool. So the uh, the latest uh, creation from uh, the Minds of ShotScope is the Pro LX, which is a combination of the Pro uh, the Pro LX rangefinder, laser rangefinder, uh, which you get in this nice case here. It's actually just, I mean, it is actually a nice case. Kind of like supposed to look like kind of like leather a little bit. It's got the uh, you know a hook on the back or a loop that you can put a, a strap through, anything like that. Um, but it's a nice case. Comes with the comes with the unit, and then the Pro LX is is the launch monitor or the launch monitor, the uh, the laser rangefinder. Uh, that is that unit, and then the Plus basically combines that, which the with their H4 uh, GPS unit which connects actually on the back here, which is, again, kind of cool. Um, so it's actually kind of two units in one. So you get uh, laser rangefinder, uh, and you get the GPS uh, and shot tracking, all in kind of two pieces, but one unit, one box. Uh, everything kind of comes together. Uh, and then you also get a package of the... Uh, I took this one off uh, my 6-iron, but uh, these little... Uh, plastic end caps that go on your uh, on your clubs for the shot tracking just like most shot tracking software uh, I do have to say the one thing I like about the shot scope ones is that they're really they are kind of small um, so you don't I know you probably if you're watching this on YouTube you probably can't see it anyway because it doesn't uh, focus in on something that small but uh, they're really smaller than say Arcos uh, you know Arcos is kind of the, they're kind of large these are really tiny really slim and if you have a flat top of the grip, they fit absolutely flush, and uh, they just they don't take up any space, which is super nice. Um, I do have to say the one downside to these is that if you have like a, a some grips have kind of like a domed butt end section, these will stick up just a little bit, um, and like the edges could catch getting out of your bag a little bit. Um, they're pr pretty small; they're much smaller than the grip, so you, you don't run into that that very often. Uh, but I love that the size of their the tags for the the clubs are super small and the other cool thing is they give you 16 so if you want to carry two, you know if you've got an extra club or two or whatever uh you know you can put that in and out of the bag without having to remember to switch tags out you know if you've got a uh you know a second whatever you know you got two drivers you got two whatever you can switch those clubs out and you don't have to worry about taking the tag off because uh, you get two extra ones i think it's like x1 and x2 uh, are the two extra ones, which is 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 pretty nice. I, I I'm I'm a big fan of uh, having extra tags on there, um, but uh, yeah. But like I said, you get uh, kind of two units in one. Everything's designed to be kind of put together, uh, which is kind of cool. It's all done with uh, with pretty strong magnets. So uh, like the the back of the Pro LX rangefinder, uh, you have your uh, lens to look out of and then below that there's kind of a flat section that when you first get it has a little plate in there covering uh the spot but you could pop the plate out and the h4 gps unit fits right in there and it actually i mean whatever magnets they use are, are fairly strong excuse me but it fits right in there and uh, the nice thing is it fits right in there and you know you i think a lot of people would say well what do you need that for why would you need a laser rangefinder with gps sitting on the back the great thing about the GPS in the back is, one, you can either just look at it really quick to get kind of a front back, and then you can laser the pin, so you kind of have an idea of, you know, 
how much room you have behind the pin, uh, in front of the pin, whatever. And then also, it's really great for the hazards because it does all the hazards on there. So if there's water up front or there's water uh, or sand traps or whatever, you can really quickly easily pull up the, the hazards on here. And you don't have to sit there trying to, you know, you know, zap the edge of the water, the other side of the water. Like, you're not trying to, like, laser all that stuff. It's right there on the screen, and it's just on. So uh, it's preloaded with, like, 40,000 courses. So, I mean, everything I've ever played, or, whoops, everything I've played so far has been uh, has been on there with no problem. They also have a way to submit uh, courses if, for some reason, a course that you play is not. Uh, they say the turnaround time is like a few days, uh, you know, whatever for, for putting that in there. And, uh, you know, it, like I said, that, that part, uh, it's kind of cool how it all works together. There's also a belt clip, um, that you can, it's actually a belt clip slash like bag clip. It's got like a little carabiner, uh, with a strap and then it's got a belt clip that you can put on your, your belt or slap it on your bag. I actually found in my Moto Caddy, uh, electric cart that there's like a perfect spot for it, uh, right on top. Uh, there's a little section that you can put like a phone mount or some other things. And if there's nothing in there, there's a little block that just fits in there. And it's it's got an opening spot, an open spot. And the little belt clip fits like perfectly in there. So I actually slap it on there. And then I have the GPS right on top of my cart. And if I don't feel like pulling out, you know, my rangefinder, I can just look on my cart. Uh, and it's right there. Uh, but you can pretty much fit it anywhere. And that's magnetic as well. So the, the H4 unit just snaps in. Uh, and so far, I've had no problem driving it over pretty rugged terrain, all that. Had no problem with the uh, the unit coming loose, coming uh, apart, anything like that. Uh, it's uh, been pretty rock solid the whole time, which is uh, which is nice. I was a little concerned when, you know, I saw everything was magnets. I was like, well, if this is on my push cart. Like, how often, you know, how, how long before it bounces itself out and that's it? And it's been, you know, like I said, rock solid there. Uh, the magnets are, are definitely strong. So when you snap the, the H4 into the Pro LX uh, rangefinder, I mean, it snaps in there pretty good. It, it, it's really solid. Uh, and it, it takes some, it, it takes a decent pull to get it out of there. So I don't think even, you know, going between, or so far for me, like going between using the laser rangefinder, putting it back in the, uh, um, you know, the case, which I just throw in my cart, it has had no problems. Uh, it's been like I said, it hasn't moved uh, at all. I've never, never even thought about it really after the first uh, first few holes, which is pretty nice. Uh, but the the the, the Pro LX uh, Laser Rangefinder is uh, is really nice. It, it's it's really lightweight, much lighter than I thought because it is a little bigger unit to be able to hold the uh, the H4 on the back. So it is a little larger unit. It's not the smallest laser rangefinder out there on the market, but uh, it, it's easy to hold. It's got a nice little grip built into it that fits uh, into your thumb and. Uh, it fits your thumb and it's easy to shoot. Uh, it's got uh, quite a, quite a few different little options there. The uh, one of the cool things is that you know with some laser rangefinders, when you look through it, uh, the uh, you know the, the optics whatever they're either black or they can be red whatever. This gives you both, so you can do uh, if you you know laser on something, you can do a red one or you can do a black uh, background and. It's it's interesting because I really like the red for the most part. I think it's because I'm used to I was used to playing a Nikon before, which has that kind of illuminated red, and to me that's easier to see, especially with a background of a lot of trees uh, or something dark like that. Uh, the red to me is super easy, and you know, but other people like you know black. The black's a little more a little more crisp because it's not you know it's not lit up. It's a little more you know crisp. The lines are a little sharper, all that. Um, but the nice thing is you can switch it literally the press of a button so you can be actually shooting the flag and you could change it from red to black with literally the touch of a button um it takes no time it switches almost instantly and it's super easy to use and it's kind of nice to have that feature i mean i know some people look at it and say oh, why do you need it it's kind of nice like i said some people like whatever colors you know if you like the the black background the red like i said to me i found that the the red is uh, is a little easier to read, especially like I said, with with darker backgrounds uh, and things like that. I, I found that part's a little easier to line up on the flag uh, instead of maybe getting uh, you know getting a tree or or something like that. So it's uh, like I said, pretty easy to uh, to use. And then uh, you know, accuracy wise is is uh, is really good. It's it's got uh, uh, you know it's sorry I'm zapping the walls in my basement to see how long they are and it's uh, six yards away at the back wall 
Um, <clears throat> but it's uh, like I said, simple, easy to use. If you've used a laser rangefinder before, one button click, you hit the target, uh, you get the vibration. Uh, you know when you when you hit the pin, uh, it's got a little icon there with uh, the pin as well. When you look through it, so when you hit it, it kind of vibrates, and you have a little icon knowing that you hit the pin and you weren't just hitting a a tree or something like that. The range on it is up to 900 yards, which, my God, I hope you're not playing anything course-wise that you need anything at 900 yards. Uh, they say their accuracy is good up to, you know, is one yard uh, plus or minus uh, at whatever target. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, one of those things where, you know, 900 yards, you, you don't, you're not going to need anything that good. It's, it's overbuilt for what you need, That that's that's for sure. Um and then, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, like I said, easy to use. It uses the same, you know, CR, the little CR123 one, one, battery um, that all of them use. So if you have a stockpile of those, like I have a box from what I just ordered on Amazon, um, and it, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they, when they do run out eventually, it's just you have a few there to, to, to use. Um, the one thing I, I'll say, the only thing I, I, I don't, that I wish this had. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have the ma like a built-in magnet to stick it on <clears throat> the side of the cart. So like on the on the the roof support, it doesn't have a built-in magnet for that, which is, is the only thing I'm a, I, I wish it had uh, because you do have to kind of put it like I. It's not a huge deal. I put it in the middle of the cart so my partner and I could share it. I just put it in the middle pocket or whatever there, and that way it's just accessible, uh, and it's not a big deal to pull it out, shoot the yardage, throw it back in the cart. Um, I, but like I said, I, I, I wish it did have uh, the external magnet so you could stick it on, you know, whatever. You could stick it on those uh, uh, the side of the cart and have it a little more accessible that way. Um, but also, I mean, I kind of understand, too, that with the, the H4 unit potentially on the back of it, it, it definitely could, uh, I guess, that extra beating it would take, you know, running down hills and running over bumps and all that. I can see where that uh, would would be a little more more dangerous, but the Pro X as a rangefinder is really good. Uh, it's everything you think it should be. It's accurate. Um, you know, when I was shooting stuff right next to people who had their Bushnells or whatever they were using, um, we always had the same yardages. I mean, when you hit the thing, I mean, maybe one guy was, you know, 164, 165. I mean, everything was was right there. So accuracy wise, it was great. And like I said, I actually kind of liked having the the H4 on the back just for kind of the front backs. Uh, to the to the green just so you kind of knew okay well the front is you know the front starts at you know 148 and the back ends at one you know 83 and the pin you know then you zap the pin and you kind of then have an idea of a little better idea of where that pin is uh on the green and then like i said for the hazards it's great uh when you can pop that thing on and just you know boom water is you know 232 away or whatever it is you know uh being able to have the those those hazards right on the screen, uh, right on the H4 screen underneath your, your optics where you don't have to, you know, pull out something else or you don't have to, I mean, I used to always take my, my range finder and try to like laser the other side of the bank, you know, across the, the water to say, oh, okay, it takes, you know, whatever to carry that water. Now you don't have to worry about that. It's just right there. You can just see it, uh, and go, which is, uh, which is pretty nice. And uh, something that, like I said, you wouldn't necessarily think you'd want with a laser range finder, but it's kind of nice to have. Um, so the, yeah, the, the like I said, Pro LX as a rangefinder, really good. It's lightweight, a lot of options on it, um, but just gives you a, a ton of info. And then also uh, on that thing there, I think it does uh, with that. It does have the uh, the slope as well, and the slope you can turn on and off on the front uh, or on the side. There's a little orange uh, kind of. It, it just looks like a shot scope logo, uh, but you slide it back and forth. You can turn slope on and off. So that way, if you are using it in tournament play, you can turn that slope on or off. But if you're using it just, you know, casually, whatever, uh, you can have slope on there as well. Slope to me isn't a big deal, in, at least for the courses I play here in Michigan. Uh, when you go up north in the northern part of the state, you get a lot more elevation. But down here in Metro Detroit, everything's pretty flat. There's really not a ton of, uh, of, of slope needed. Uh, at least the courses I play, you're not playing super uphills or downhills. Uh, everything's within a couple yards. So for me, I, I typically... I usually, I sometimes have it on, sometimes I don't. I don't really look at it, though, um, just because, like I said, I mean, there's not a huge uh, difference in elevation. Uh, but like I said, Pro LX, really good. If, I mean, just as a rangefinder, it's great. So if you wanted just a rangefinder, uh, you can buy the Pro, LX, Pro, the Pro LX just as that. And then the H4 unit as a GPS is really good. Uh, it, it, it does, you know, GPS really well. Uh, the accuracy seems to be, you know, 
seemed to be spot on. I mean, everything that you lasered uh, in terms of the pin, if it was in the middle, I mean, everything was pretty close. Uh, again, it, it's hard to like, you know, laser out exactly. Um, you know, you know, like when you laser the flag and it's 160 and this thing says the middle is 150. Yeah, I mean, okay, the pin's 10 yards behind or whatever. But uh, the GPS part of it seemed extremely accurate. It was really quick. It was easy. It easily itself went between holes. It kind of knew where you were and, and easily switched. Um, you know, I don't play any courses that have... There are too many tee boxes that are like right on top of each other, so I've never had that problem. I know there, you know, there are some courses around Metro Detroit that I've played that have tee boxes that are, I mean, literally right on top of each other. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens there. But everything I played, I mean, when you were done with uh, done with ten, it, it switched right over to eleven when you got to the tee box and and you went. Um, now the cool thing is, is so it has you know all the GPS stuff. It has all the hazards. All everything there is preloaded. Um, the battery life seems to be really good as well. I charged it the day I got it. I played 27 with it so far. I think I've played 27 holes with it. I haven't charged it yet, uh, and I think it's still, you know, charge-wise pretty yeah, pretty high. I guess I can turn it on and see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm like not even half, uh, excuse me, half, uh, you know, it's not even half uh, halfway down yet. Um which is kind of cool. The, the screen is is small. You know, I mean, this is not a huge unit. I mean, it's pretty small, but the screen is easy to read. Uh, even in the direct sunlight, uh, it's easy to read. You have no problem, uh, you know, seeing what yardages are on here. Um, and then also, uh, you know, you get some of the, uh, you get the shot tracking stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, so the shot tracking is basically, or, or as ShotScope calls it, performance tracking, uh, is basically using uh, a combination of the H4 and the tags for the clubs to basically track your whole round and most you know that they've got it to, to be as, about as seamless as you can get it um there's still a little bit of work that you have to do in terms of adjustment sometimes and a lot of that is uh is on the green uh from t to green for the most part it uh it, it's pretty solid it catches everything uh, i know i've heard some people say like oh it, it's caught some practice wings or whatever um, I don't take practice swings, so I guess that, that works for me a little bit better. Um, but the way they designed it, too, is kind of cool because, again, I've used some other shot tracking so, uh, uh, shot tracking systems, and there's always something where, you know, basically the, the tag on the club uses a little chip, and it has to get close to the H4 unit. Uh, so you basically, they say to just to kind of tap it or get it really close to the screen, and the unit the H4 will actually vibrate and put up on the screen what club it it registered so you can actually look at it and know that yeah okay it's got driver I'm standing on the tee um, but the nice thing is with this you know you can take that H4 you know put it in your pocket and then just kind of tap the uh, tap the the tag to your pocket and it'll vibrate you'll know it hit you know it it, it registered um, and then you just hit your shot you know you throw the club in the bag you move on to your next shot and when you tap it, it basically tracks. So it knows, like, hey, he hit, hit driver here. You go out to your ball, and when you tap the next club, say, you're, you know, you hit, hit an eight iron into the green, it then measures the distance, uh, it measures the location, and, you know, then measure, measures the next shot. And, you know, that stuff, tee to green, works really, really well. I mean, uh, you know, you can go through, not even really think about it uh, at the time. And like I said, for me, I didn't have it in my pocket, uh, tee to green. I basically left it on my uh, either my push cart, um, or if I was playing, uh, you know, in an actual cart, I had it on the back of the Pro LX, and then when you got up to the green, I would just unsnap it and take it off, throw it in my pocket, and then walk up, tap your putter, hit your putt, tap your putter, hit your next putt, hopefully not have to tap your putter again, uh, and then on there, there's basically a, a mode uh, that they call what's the name of it? I, I, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess up the name. Like I always mess up names with the stuff. But uh, called pin collect. That uh, when you get to the hole, you basically hit a button on the M4 to say how many putts you had, and it marks that location as that's where the flag was. So that way it knows, like you know, if you were long, if you were short, it basically registered where that putt was, and then you walk over to the flag. You know, knock the knock the putt in, knock whatever putt in, walk over to the flag, hit two putt or whatever it was, one putt, whatever. It knows the location then of the flag. It kind of tags that GPS location of the flag, and then you have uh, you know some some putting stats there as well, which is which is pretty cool. I mean, it's nice. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to when you're on the green to remember there were 
quite a few times when uh, there's a little reminder that pops up <clears throat> about the, the, the pin uh, collect as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a little reminder that'll pop up, you know, as you're, you're leaving the green. But um, I've uh, th th that's the part that takes a little bit of getting used to, is just walking up to the hole, remembering to basically hit the button to say, you know, yeah, I had two putts, uh, and then walking off. You get used to it, uh, but it takes takes a little, you know, the first nine uh, or so, you're going to forget. <clears throat> you just are. You're going to forget on a couple holes, and uh, you'll be, you know, <clears throat> you have to go back and, and do an edit, which isn't a big deal. You can go back and, and edit your round uh, later on. But, uh, you know, like I said, tee to green and even on the green, for the, you know, if, if you follow everything, it works perfect. Um, you know, the only thing is, you know, the uh, is remembering to hit that pin collect button. <laughs> and and uh, But once you do, it's, it's pretty nice because then, it, like I said, it marks where that location was. It marks your putts. And uh, there's just, if you can remember to do it, it's much, much less uh, editing you have to do to the round, which is, um, which is pretty nice. But it's, um, uh, it, it, it's super easy to use. Uh, and then the, the stats it gives uh, are, are pretty cool. I mean, you can go into the app. Uh, basically, there's a, a shot scope app as well as you can go online. There's a dashboard online. And, uh, you know, it'll go in there and tell you, you know, in terms of how far you hit each club. Um, it'll give you some strokes gained. It'll give you uh, a, a bunch of stuff there. And, of, of course, it uh, is going to now not have me logged in. Uh, but <laughs> but you can go in there and, uh, you know, like I said, with, uh, with everything you do, uh, it'll you know keep track of fairways and regulation, green greens and regulation, uh, and then the other cool part, which a lot of people like to look at, is you know you can go into a hole overview and look at all the shots on the hole, and it'll tell you you know oh you hit a 250 yard drive there, and then you hit you know uh, like looking at one of them, you know you hit a 250 yard drive, and then uh, a four iron 193, uh, and then a little it was a par five, and then a little uh, you know sand wedge uh, onto the green. Um, you can go through it and it'll break down basically every hole and it's it's pretty darn accurate and some of them when you hit it into some weird places you know you hit it way right way left uh you'll see kind of where you are on there and um it's pretty uh it, it's pretty interesting to see uh you know when you go out there and look at these whole things of where you hit it and then you know and like i said give you all the, the stats in terms of performance uh you can go into club performance and look at it and it'll tell you you know average driver uh you know average driver length uh you know in terms of what you hit, your longest drive, um, you can look at, uh, you know, for every club, it'll basically say, you know, hey, your, your five iron for the most part, you know, is for me 180, 183 yards, but your longest, you hit one 196. Like, that's pretty uh, pretty solid. And the interesting thing is that, so I had, <clears throat> I had shot scope set up before, uh, and I used it with like the, the V3 and something like that with my watch. And then I, you know, synced it up here, and it'll basically just keep adding onto the stats. So no matter what unit or what you're using from ShotScope, the app will work with all of it, and you won't necessarily lose all your old data because you're using now, you know, the the Pro LX with the H4. Uh, you won't lose all that info. So you can go in there and, uh, like I said, kind of look at your shots and and see where, uh, you know, all that info will just be added onto. Um, but it gives you, you know, performance there in terms of club performance. Uh, you know, it'll give you tee shot performance in terms of, you know, do you hit stuff typically to the left or the right or, uh, you know, how many fairways do you hit? This took into consideration some older data because uh, I'm hitting 40 for 46% of the fairways, but uh, uh, I know that is definitely not the case at the moment. Um, and then, uh, you know, like I said, you, you know, gives you a bunch of stuff in terms of stroke gain. Uh, I like, like right now I'm minus 3.5 uh, Minus 3.5 uh, <laughs> on my uh, my tee shots uh, or my strokes gain. So uh, I'm basically losing three, almost three and a half strokes uh, for my tee shots, uh, you know, per round. <laughs> but my approach shots are up, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I think I'm plus five on that. So that's that's solid, I guess. Um, but it gives you, you know, some, some short game stuff where you can look at, you know, proximity to the hole, uh, you know, things like that. There's, there's just a ton of info inside the... Uh, um, you know, inside the app, in terms of putting, if you if you definitely if you keep track of uh, using the pin collector and, and doing your your putts uh, on the green, it'll kind of give you that. Uh, you know, do you miss short? Do you miss right? Do you miss left? It'll kind of give you all that. Like for me, fifty nine percent of my putts uh, I miss short, which is never good, especially if you're trying to make birdies because you know you're not going to uh, not going to make birdies there, uh, leaving everything short. But uh, overall, like I said, the, the app's just got a ton of stuff in there to kind of break down your game look at things and, and you can kind of look at and see where, you know, where you need improvement, where you need to, uh, where you're, you're, you're hitting the ball well, 
uh, all that. And like I said, the uh, the nice thing I, I think a lot of stuff too is is the uh, you know the the averages for you know your drivers or driver for for irons, drivers, hybrids, all that. Um, but I think the the averages for those are really good because I think after you know after a few rounds, kind of looking at you know how long did you hit these clubs, you can kind of really see you know what are you hitting these these clubs and for some for some people it'll, it'll maybe be a little eye-opening to say like oh well you know hey i only hit my seven iron you know my average seven iron on here is is 155 and i typically pull that on a 150 shot or a 160 shot um you know typically i think of it as my 160 club it looks to be a little shorter than that so maybe next time i go up and i have 155 maybe do i think about you know depending on wind depending on everything maybe do i try you know do i go hit six iron there uh, instead of seven, since it looks like seven iron, I typically don't quite get uh, to that full 160. So a lot of stuff like that is is, is kind of cool. Um, and like I said, a lot of that uh, the strokes game stuff, which I know is big uh, right now. But uh, you know, you can go into there and um, and like I said, look at all that stuff. And then there's a bunch of different medals and stuff you can unlock as well. <clears throat> so there's you know different uh, achievements and things like that as you keep playing with it. You know, in terms of recording rounds and. Uh, you know, distances and accuracy and things like that. There's a bunch of kind of cool little games and stuff like that that you can kind of keep yourself interested in, in using it and finding out what, uh, again, what things you're doing well, what things you're not. But uh, overall, just a, a, a really nice system to use. I, I really liked it. Um, I think it's one of those where, especially with the Pro LX, you can use as much or as little as you want. Uh, if there's a round where, hey, you know what? I'm just going out. I'm playing a little par three course with some buddies. I don't really, you know, we're going to have a few a few beverages and whatever, hey, grab the, the, the range finder, you're good, uh, you can just use that. If it's something where, hey, I'm playing, you know, a, a whole weekend worth of golf and I want to track all, you know, all my stats and everything, you, you've got that ability. So, uh, you know, you've got the ability to do a lot of stuff with uh, with this this system, as I'll call it, the Pro LX. So, um, like I said, the nice thing, uh, that H4, you know, being magnetic, it's easy to kind of pop off, throw it in your pocket to walk up to the green. Uh, and for me, like I said, I kept it on my... Uh, my push cart or my electric cart and I would just kind of tap the club there hit my shot and you know be on my way so uh, it's pretty versatile and how you want to use it it can kind of adapt to, to whatever you know however which way you find the easiest um, but uh, but overall really impressed with uh, with how everything works and like I said the, the only knock I'd give to it is I, I'd love to find a way where you know the green stuff gets a little easier to use I think ShotScope's got a good one um, it's always you know the the least amount of interference is what I'm looking for, but uh, they've, they've got it down pretty good. Um, and like I said, the only other thing I'd wish, I wish there was a, a magnetic, uh, you know, it was the, 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 <laughs> the Pro LX, the, the laser range finder, uh, I wish it had a magnetic side uh, that you could slap it on the cart and, uh, and have it more accessible there. But um, like I said, that's pretty, you know, not a wild gripe. You, I could always, if I really wanted to, get one of those uh, straps uh, for it and, and put it on there and, and it would stick on the cart with no problem. Um, so I'm, I may do that. We'll see. But overall, been uh, been a lot of fun using this thing, and uh, it's been uh, a, a fun experience and a good experience. I've, I've liked it so far. So if you're looking for something where, um, you know, you're looking for a, a new laser rangefinder or, uh, you know, you're looking for something to do shot tracking and all that, um, you know, you have a lot of options with uh, with this unit. So if you go to uh, if you go to ShotScope. Dot com check out the pro lx plus uh, i mean you can probably check out the pro lx by itself you can check out all their stuff uh, but they've got a lot of products there they still make the shots go v3 which is a great unit if you're just looking for some shot tracking and gps i mean they've got a um, a lot of stuff uh, in terms of products that uh, that you know depending on what you're looking to do um, they've uh, they, they've got a lot of stuff uh, to help you out so go to shotscope.com Check out that, uh, you know, what they've got. But the Pro LX Plus has been uh, a, a really cool system there. And I've, I've enjoyed using it the past uh, past couple weeks. So the uh, with that there, we go from super tech, high tech, down to a little bit lower tech. But again, I know that uh, I think I've talked about every shoe in the ASICs lineup. But uh, they've sent in pretty much every shoe in the ASICs lineup. So, uh, and honestly, they're, they're kind of fun to walk. They're easy to test because you just walk around and play golf in them. So it's a, an easy test, but the the one here uh, that I've, I just got my hands on, or actually I've had my hands on for a little bit, I've been wearing them a, a decent amount, would be the Asics, the Gel Course Duo Boa. So I have uh, not owned a whole lot of Boa shoes in my life, 
Uh, and if you're not familiar with BOA, BOA is basically a, a laces replacement system. So uh, there's a little dial on the shoe, which on the A61 is up in the side. Uh, and then there's some stainless steel wire that runs across the top of the shoe, just like a set of laces. And when you snap in the little dial, you just turn it, you'll hear it click. It starts to tighten down, and it tightens down on your foot. And uh, the whole theory is that uh, the BOA thing adds uh, consistent pressure. It's not... Uh, um, it's not uh, going to create like they call hot spots or anything like that. Um, it's supposed to be, create like a very uh, even pressure on your foot, on the top of your foot, make it more comfortable, uh, while also never coming loose or anything like that, uh, because you have to then pop the, uh, the little disc, you have to pull it out, and it snaps out, and then you can loosen the shoe. So it, it doesn't come loose, you don't have to worry about, you know, shoe laces coming untied, anything like that. Um, but the uh, I remember when Boa kind of first came out in golf shoes. I was working at a sh you know working at the shop, and I remember trying them on and walking around. And I don't remember what brand. I don't remember their foot joy or what they were. Um, but I tried them on, and I just like my heel always felt like it was slipping. So I just I kind of tried them out. Didn't really like them. Moved on, and I never never owned or bought a Boa shoe since. So uh, just kind of went with traditional laces and things like that. And then these came in. And I was kind of like, eh, the boa, we'll see. And uh, I threw them on, and the first nine holes I walked at uh, my league, no heel slip. I was uh, I was pretty impressed. Uh, I was actually kind of shocked of how comfortable they were. And to be honest, the system worked really well. I didn't have any heel slipping, anything like that. Uh, they're really easy to just, you know, you toss them on, crank down the, the disc a little bit. You start walking off, and then, uh, you know, maybe as you walk to the practice screen, something like that, you may... Notch them down just a, a, another few clicks as your foot kind of settles into the shoe. But uh, it, it actually is like kind of a really easy, simple system. And uh, like I said, you don't have to worry about tying laces or, you know, wet laces if you're getting out of the, into a wet parking lot. You know, they fall on the ground, whatever. Uh, everything is just right there. And it's all stainless steel. The cable, it's kind of rubber coated uh, stainless steel. So it, it shouldn't break or anything like that. It should be pretty darn strong. It should be stronger than a shoelace. Um, but yeah, it's actually really easy to use. You just kind of throw them on, snap down the disc, turn it until it's as tight as you feel comfortable with, and then you walk away. And that's it. <laughs> and it's it's really that simple. It's super fast. Um, and it's, like I said, extremely comfortable in this shoe. And, and like I said, I didn't notice any uh, that kind of heel slip that I noticed years and years ago with uh, with the first shoes I ever tried on. So, um, like I said, the, the Course Duo is kind of a little bit like the Course Ace, uh, it looks very similar. It's got the same kind of sole and setup. The difference being this one is spiked. So they do have traditional spikes along with, you know, the same kind of aggressive spikeless sole uh, that uh, the Course Ace has. Um, and it has really, really good traction. I mean, I played with it. I think the first, was it the first or second time I played with it, uh, it kind of rained on us. And the shoe is waterproof. The top of it is not waterproof, as I found as it was pouring down and water was kind of running down my legs uh, because I didn't bring rain pants at the time. Uh, so if water comes in over the top, not waterproof, uh, which I don't think any shoe is, but uh, the shoe is waterproof. Uh, but even the rain, everything, I mean, we played uh, through some rain there. It was fine. And uh, the traction on it is is really, really good. Again, with spikes, uh, you know, everything's changeable. So when they wear out, you put some new ones in. I feel like even if you had spikes that were pretty much worn out with nothing left in them, you're still going to have some good traction just because of the, how aggressive this uh, this outsole is, all the, the big kind of rubber lugs on there. Comfort-wise, really comfortable. Uh, a little narrower shoe than the Keanu. Um, I feel like I have a pretty traditional width foot. I, I'm not, I don't think I'm too narrow or, or too wide or anything like that. Definitely a, a narrower shoe than the Keanu uh, that I've talked about before. Um, I, I've noticed this one here, like, you know, just on the kind of the outside uh, ball of my foot, I can tell... You know, I, I not that I there's no I wouldn't want to call it pressure or whatever, but you can definitely feel, uh, you know, a little more tightness there, especially in the toe box of this shoe compared to, to the Keanu. Um, so I, I would say it's kind of average to maybe on the a hair of the narrower side. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that uh, the online they say you know when I look at their site, it said like has a note it says runs a, a half size large. These are 11s. Uh, I wear an 11 and everything, and these seem extremely comfortable. Uh, I don't think that they ran abnormally large. Uh, if I would have read that, I may have ordered an 11 and a half, and it'd be interesting to see how that fits. 
uh, but the 11 fits me perfectly fine. So I wear an 11 in, you know, Nike and, you know, whatever, pretty much everything else. Uh, and these fit perfectly fine. I thought they fit just like an 11. Um, like I said, other than being a hair narrower than, uh, than the, you know, the other shoes in the line, I thought lengthwise they, they fit exactly like an 11. So I, I don't know in terms of the half size large. I, well, let's just, if I ordered a 10 and a half, I definitely wouldn't feel comfortable wearing the 10 and a half. That, that, like I said, running large. If I would order a 10 and a half, um, they, I, I got to think they would have been at least too narrow, uh, a little too compact, a little too tight. Uh, so I, I, I'm glad I got the 11 and not, uh, not a 10 and a half there. These ones here have the same thing, the flight foam uh, on the bottom for the cushioning. <clears throat> they also have the Asics, you know, legendary or iconic gel uh, in the heel. Cushioning on them is great. I mean, in terms of walking, I've walked numerous uh, uh, rounds with them so far and felt great. A lot of cushioning to them. They do sit a little bit higher than, uh, than say, the Keanu. And uh, and I think because of the spikes, uh, they do sit a little higher than even the, the, the Course Ace. So they, they, you know, in terms of stability, they're they're definitely stable. They just you can definitely tell you you sit just up a, a little bit higher in them. I wish they were at a slightly little lower profile uh, in terms of of how high I sit off the ground. But the cushioning on them is is absolutely phenomenal. Um, walking, there's no fatigue, anything like that. You'll you'll be extremely comfortable. I mean, it's like wearing an Asics running shoe. Uh, they're they're soft, uh, but like I said, the support's really good. The whole outside is this kind of it, it almost like they designed it to look like mesh but it's not it's it's kind of like a tpu material so support wise it's great it hugs your foot there's not a whole lot of like uh um, kind of stretch or movement in it even when it, you know, once you're locked down with that boa system you're pretty much in the shoe swing wise i've never had <clears throat> anything you know close to slipping anything like that they're great in fairway bunkers for full shots because you know between the spikes and the uh, kind of the spikeless outsole on it. There's just a ton of, of traction there, and they're they're pretty locked down in in, in bunkers. Um, but overall, really a, a really comfortable shoe. I mean, excuse me, everything inside uh, seems to be well built. Um, you know, like some of the other Asics shoes with this kind of TPU material, they're, they're a hair warmer uh, compared to like a, a traditional mesh shoe that has a lot of breathability. They're not like ovens, but they they do retain a little bit more heat. Uh, than you would expect, I think, with more of a sport-looking shoe. But walking on under, une uneven terrain is great. They, like I said, they, they, they kind of lock you in. You're not going to worry about slipping, going up or down hills, anything like that. Uh, now, with the spikes, I do have to say, there's if you're walking across like wood planks uh, or wooden stairs and they're a little bit wet, uh, you do have to worry about them slipping a little bit there. Um, you know, And some of those things, they're just slippery by nature. There's not a whole lot you can do. But these, with the spikes, it does make them a little more slick on those uh, those wooden walkways uh, when they're wet. So, you know, be aware of that. Um, but like I said, everywhere else in terms of grass, gravel, sand, <clears throat> you name it for the most part, uh, it, it, they offer really, really good traction. Um, the other interesting thing is is in these, where the tongue kind of meets the, the sides of the shoe, uh, when you actually first put it on, you know, I mean, you, you loosen it up, you slide your foot in, and you actually have to kind of push the tongue to go inside the in, in, inside the shoe. If you keep locking it down, the tongue sometimes will get kind of caught on the outside. So you do have to be aware of that a little bit, that you make sure the tongue is sliding inside of uh, inside of the shoe instead of getting caught kind of on the outside <clears throat> and bunching up a little bit. It doesn't really affect the comfort or anything like that, um, but it, it definitely is something you kind of notice and uh, I've been aware of. I wish the top of the, or the sides of the shoe came out just a little bit taller and it would probably alleviate that problem. But, <clears throat> like, again, that's a, a pretty minor, minor gripe when you're just tossing these on and they take, you know, two seconds to just crank down the disc and, and walk away. Um, but overall, they've been, been really good. I mean, the build quality seems really nice on them. You know, everything on them seems to be built really well. Uh, there's no funky seams or, you know, anything that looks, you know, really cheap on them. Uh, and like I said, the, the biggest thing is that they're just comfortable to wear. You know, when, you, when you're walking, you know, 9, 18 holes, whatever, um, you know, you're just, they're just comfortable to walk in, you know, in terms of, they've got some flexibility to them, uh, in terms of, you know, as you walk the, the way the toe kind of flexes as you walk, you know, in terms of the stability, in terms of like the twisting of the shoe, it doesn't twist very easily. Um, 
but it does flex as you walk like through the toe and it's got some built-in sections on the bottom where you can see the rubber kind of disconnects from itself and kind of makes little pads that, that are more flexible but the the actual twisting of the shoe from uh you know if you try to twist it from toe to heel it, it doesn't really want to move it stays pretty much right there um, but yeah overall i've been been really happy with that shoe i think it's really you know a, a really comfortable shoe if, Something like the Keanu is just a little bit wide, you know, has a little, too much room in the toe box. I think this one just a little bit narrower, uh, but offers really good support and great traction. It's uh, it's just a, a comfortable shoe to wear. They make it in a couple different. I, I think right now, at least when I look online, they they've only got it in black. Um, but uh, let me see. Oh no, they do make a they make a white one. So it's it's an all white and gray one. Uh, so they make a white and gray and a black. And uh, yeah, if you go to uh, if you actually go to Strixon.com, they've got the shoes because they're the ones who uh, <clears throat> who actually distribute ASIC golf shoes uh, in the U.S. So if you're in the U.S., go to StrixonGolf.com uh, and you can check them out there. They're was it 179, which you know for some people who look at an athletic shoe, it's kind of a lot. But with the Boa system, I don't think that's crazy out of line uh, for what these things are. And like I said, being waterproof, all the comfort, all the things that are built into it. Um, it's a pretty darn nice shoe. So uh, I've, I've been enjoying it. I've been actually wearing it a decent amount, um, you know, more than I thought I would. Let's put it that way. When I first got it in, I thought I would wear it for nine holes and, you know, do my, my show on it, and, th and that would be it. And then, uh, yeah, I've been wearing it uh, a, a good amount. So uh, it, it's been surprisingly uh, a, a nicer shoe than I thought it was going to be to uh, to wear around. So uh, if you're looking for a new shoe and you want something that's just, you know, you're looking for comfort above kind of everything else, Take a look at that that uh, Asics Gel Course Duo Boa because, uh, like I said, it is a, a really comfortable shoe and and you know great traction all that. I mean it's just it's kind of got everything. So um, you know style wise, I mean everybody's got their own style. So you may either you may love it, you may hate it, you may feel you know nothing about it, whatever. But uh, style wise, everybody's a little different on that. But uh, in terms of performance, uh, you, you you can't go wrong with performance of it. So. Um, but yeah, that's all I got today. Hopefully you guys uh, have a great rest of your U.S. Open week. Uh, hopefully you get to watch some golf. Hopefully you maybe get to play some golf uh, for you fathers out there. Have a happy Father's Day. My dad's not listening, but happy Father's Day to him. Uh, I know he'll be playing. Well, he won't be playing golf on the weekend. He'll be playing golf. Uh, he'll be playing golf today and tomorrow. But he won't be. Uh, he won't be playing golf uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So hopefully, like I said, all you dads out there have a good Father's Day. And uh, yeah, we'll have a good U.S. Open. We'll talk to you guys next week.